Hello everyone, I've been interested in nuclear power lately, and along with that comes, of course, reading about accidents that happen. So today I'm going to share with you a little bit about the SL-1 accident. This was the first nuclear power plant accident in the United States. SL-1 stood for Stationary Low Power Reactor Number 1 and was an experiment by the United States Army. The Army was trying to develop a small nuclear reactor that could power radar stations and outposts in the Arctic. The reactor would need to be small, produce low power, and could be flown in a plane. The Army also wanted this to be a reactor that would just be able to sit, it wouldn't need any maintenance, wouldn't need refueling for a long time as well. The SL-1 reactor fit this bill, being small and low power, producing up to 3 megawatts of heat, but usually produced 400 kilowatts of heat along with 200 kilowatts of power during normal operation. The SL-1 accident took place in a remote location in Idaho, some 40 miles west of the city of Idaho Falls. The reactor was shut down for maintenance and upgrades on December 21st, 1960, and all of those upgrades and maintenance went as planned. The problem occurred January 3rd, 1961, as three operators were putting everything back together to prepare to restart the reactor the next day. A part of the maintenance procedure at this time was to detach the central control rod from the automatic control mechanism. After maintenance, the center control rod was to be lifted out no more than four inches to re reconnect it to this mechanism. Well, for an unknown reason, the control rod was pulled out at least 20 inches, which caused a massive reaction to occur. The massive amount of power generated in the short amount of time, in a couple milliseconds, created water hammer. The water hit the top of the reactor vessel at over 100 miles per hour, creating an estimated 10,000 per square inch inches of pressure. This blew parts of the top of the reactor off, impaling one of the operators to the roof of the building. Another operator died at the explosion, and there, the third one was still alive until dying of head trauma a few hours later. Post-incident estimates say that the reactor produced 20 gigawatts of power when it exploded, many, many times higher than the 3 megawatt rating. The explosion also made the reactor jump 9 feet into the air. When the accident occurred, firefighters received a fire alarm and arrived at the reactor within 10 minutes. Nothing looked wrong at the site until the radiation detectors went off as they headed towards the reactor. Eventually, after going in and out a few times, a group finally saw that there was damage in the reactor room. After retrieving the bodies, the investigations began. The main question was, why was the center control rod removed so far? Many theories have a step... A st were established such as suicide, suicide and murder, and the center control rod got stuck, leading the operator to apply too much force, pulling the rod out as it finally became free. The theory of suicide and murder came from the tensions between two of the operators, as one did not like the fact that his supervisor was an old classmate. Also, the man who pulled the rod out had just found out a few hours before that his wife wanted to divorce him. Regardless of the theories, we will never know the true reason, as all the witnesses died in this event. The reactor was buried not far from where it was operated, as authorities thought it was too radioactive to take it on public highways to a radioactive waste facility 15 to 20 miles away. The accident led to safer nuclear reactors, implementing, implementing new safety measures to prevent the reactor from activating if a single control rod is removed. As for the men, one of them was buried in Arlington National Cemetery in a lead casket. The others I could not find too much information on, but I did find out that some body parts of these men were so radioactive that they could not get a proper burial. They had to be buried with a nuclear reactor. Well, that covers the majority of the SO1 accident. If you would like more information, I'll put links down below to articles you can read and also a video that the Atomic Commission created describing the incident as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.